Here with Caitlin Sharpie? Sharply. Sharply. Yes. And uh, we're doing a fan collector meet up here in uh, the Northern, which has, there's some Litex Industrials over there and then a few random hunters. Nothing too special, but uh, it's got fans though. You picked a place with fans. Yes. So she had some questions for me, fan related questions, so I'm going to give her the camera and then she's going to interview me and it's going to be very official. <laughs> I don't know about that. So, Dan, yes. first of all, how did the Fan Museum get uh, established? And um, second, how did you come to work there? So, um, the Fan Museum was actually started by a fan company called Bornado. And I believe you sell their fans at Menards. They have the little portable... Yeah, yeah the little I, table fans and want, uh, stand fans. I want that one, by the way. The, the, like the one that's made to look old. Yeah. They sell um, for like 60 bucks, and I just can't bring myself to pay the 60 bucks. You know, some Menards have them now, and they're... Um, they're like discontinued, so you can get a pretty good deal on them. Only the red ones, but... Okay, well, can you get me one? I can try. See, there was one on a Facebook Marketplace in Minneapolis today for 10 bucks, and I was like, great, I'll get that while I'm up there, and I sent a message to reply. I'll take a look next time I go to work and see if there are any stores in the area that have them for you. Awesome, and just let me know. Is there I a will. way to ship it between stores or I have to drive to that store? I can send it to you. All right now. <laughs> yeah, for so. you, For you, Spiffy, anything. <laughs> so... So that, that company actually started the Fan Museum in conjunction with the American Fan Collectors Association, which is a bunch of uh, grumpy old guys that collect old fans. And I, I was a member when I was a kid. There's some very sweet people in the, in the American Fan Collectors Association. But, um, uh, so that was a joke. But, um, uh, don't fire me, Tom. But, uh, so, the, uh, they, they started it in conjunction with Bornado. Or Bornado, I don't know which is correct. And um, and it was very small. It was like one room the size of like a large office, but it had a lot of really nice fans in it. And it was there since the 90s, I think. I remember being invited to go there when I was a kid, uh, and I didn't. Um, but it would have been very cool. And uh, what happened was uh, Bornado, the company, changed hands. Uh, I don't know all the details, and I don't want to... Um, tell all the details that I know, but the long story short, the founder of Bornado uh, lost the company in divorce. Oh. I know. It was wow. very sad. And so, the, the American Fan Collectors Association was very upset because they didn't know what was going to happen to this fan museum. They thought that all the fans could be lost or something like that. And uh, my boss, Tom Frampton, stepped in and said, I'll save it. And uh, I don't know, I assume he paid. I don't know who paid, but somebody, somebody paid to transport all the fans from Bornado headquarters in Kansas to Fanimation headquarters in um, in uh, Indiana. Do we want to take a break for cheese curds? I know you're hungry. Sure. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna hold that thought on that story, and we're gonna come back. You want to show the cheese curds? They're there very I think there's good. A pause button. There is a pause button. Okay, we'll try that. Okay. All right, now we proceed. Are you filming? What? Is it filming? Yes, it's filming. Okay. Yeah. So we left off. You were asking me about how the how fan the... museum came to be a fan animation. So yeah, Tom yeah. stepped in and rescued it, and they moved the entire museum, which at the time was very small. It was like a third of just the downstairs, and um, they moved it to fan animation. And Tom started filling it in with his own collection. Oh, okay. Which his own collection at the time was easily double what they already had. Wow. That was at the time. He has not stopped buying fans since. <laughs> and neither have you. Well, we'll get there. But yeah, okay. you can imagine. Yeah, Tom's a, a, an insane fan buying machine. And so, um, they uh, um, they were going to have the annual convention for the Antique Fan Collector Association fanfare. They were going to have that at Fanimation again. Okay. And I think either 2013 or 2014. And Tom wanted to have something new and special for them to see, so he converted the. Uh, the up, he made an upstairs to it, but at the time it was just a big empty room, and they filled it in with a bunch of you know floor fans and window fans and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, so that they, that was how the upstairs got started. It was to have something new and different for a fanfare, but um, you know at the time it was not a whole lot there. And um, so meanwhile, I had known Tom since I think either the late nineties or early two thousands when I bought my first like really old Casablanca fan and I was trying to find something about it and somebody was like, Hey, you know the guy Tom Frampton that does Fanimation, he made those when he was in Casablanca. Why don't you email him? At this time Fanimation was still a small niche company, you know, Tom, uh, they didn't become a really big company until the two thousands I think. And so I had emailed Tom out the blue and asked him some questions and 
you know, him and I had exchanged emails every so often for 10 years. <clears throat> and um, then with Facebook and social media, the ceiling fan groups started popping up. And there started being a lot more interaction between fan collectors and people in the fan industry and everything like that. And, um, yeah, I don't remember really how it transpired, but the short version is that Tom asked me, he said, hey, do you have any uh, of the first Casablancas? Because that's what I'd always emailed him about. You know, he's like, you have this model, you have this model, you have this model. And I said, yeah, I have all of those. And he said, well, I'd, I'd like to start adding those to the museum. And so we started talking about it, and he said, well, you know, start picking some of the fans that you think I'd like to start expanding the post-1950s, you know, section, especially ceiling fans. Can you start thinking about what you would want to include? Um, and at the time, I knew nothing. So I was like, well, can you give me some guidance? And he's basically like, no, just pick, pick like a couple dozen fans that you really think should be there. And so he brought me to Fanfare he, um, the, the, when it was back in Indiana. And that was kind of his way of like, you know, inviting me to come and see what they were doing and be a part of it. So I brought the first, uh, first couple pallets of fans then. And... Um, you know, a few months later, uh, he had me back to hang them up, and we had hung 16 fans upstairs, and none of them were powered, and I thought it was really cool, and I thought we were really doing something. And uh, some kids found my videos on YouTube, and I started finding out there are kids that are into fans, so I invited the kids and their parents to come, and we had our first group trip, which was three kids and their parents, and then three adult fan collectors, and I thought we were really doing something. Now the trips are huge. <laughs> well, now we again. Now we have 108 uh, powered fans upstairs. I don't know how many fans downstairs, but we have at least we have I think nine powered fans downstairs. In addition to all the ones that are unpowered, uh, this is just ceiling fans. You know, not counting uh, other types of fans. And our last group trip, we had 60 people, 20 of which were kids. I think we've had close to 100 at uh, summer and then the summer before. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. And I, I go back, we do the group trips now every quarter, and I try to go to Fanimation at least three times a year to work and add things to the museum. And so when you go to Fanimation, like how long of an engagement is that? Well, <clears throat> normally if I'm going to work, I'd go for a week. Okay. I just because I, and that was my decision because I work for a church, so I can't really miss Sundays without taking off. To, and, and, Taking off without pay. Okay. So I would, I would, you know, leave Sunday after church, and I'd work for a week, and I'd come back before the following Sunday, and that way I wouldn't have to take off work. Um, and when I would come for a group trip, I would either come initially, I would just come a day, come the day before, etc. <coughs> so I started looping in my work with the group trips. I'd work for a week, then we'd have the kids there on Saturday, and then I'd go back, which is really tiring because I'd be doing manual labor all week. And then I have to deal with a group of kids, and then I have to drive back. But at the same time, it would save me a trip. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, now this past time was different because <coughs> because of different stuff going on in my life. I had to move. Um, I, I can't remember what else happened. I, I something happened in the in the winter, and then I had to move, and a series of things happened in my own life where I wasn't able to spend a week uh, this whole year, and so instead I spent three weeks. And that's how we did the most recent project where I powered up all the fans and everything like that. I actually spent three weeks there, and then we had the group of kids on Saturday, and I was even more tired. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine. So, um, and you're going to come to one of them. For sure. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a little bit of a hike, Yeah. but I definitely want to do it. Well, I'm trying to connect you with Andrew and Brittany so that you guys can carpool. There's also a fan collector in Hastings named Bill Phantom. Okay. And uh, his, he's got a... He's, He's uh, got a family. His kids are teenagers. He's really, you know, so he's a little bit higher age bracket, but um, not by a whole lot. And he's a heck of a heck of a cool guy. Um, he's mostly into like box fans and desk fans and older stuff. Okay. <clears throat> but he likes a lot of the things. <clears throat> so we'll find you some people to carpool with. Yeah. So what are the questions that you have? Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just curious, like, about your interactions with other fan collectors and like how that's changed how you collect fans. Well, or if it has, it definitely has because there's a lot of stuff I know about only because other fan collectors spotted them or found them. You know, if it was just limited to stuff that I saw, 
first of all, I would never would have known what the Terra fan was. Terra fan was one of my favorite fans when I was a kid, but I never knew what it was called. I never knew anything about it. There was one hanging in a lumberyard, not in the display, just over the staircase. Okay. <laughs> when I was a kid, and I was obsessed with it, and I never saw another one like it. And so when I got to be like a teenager, I posted, I drew a sketch of it, and posted it on the internet. And I was like, anybody know what this fan is? And some other fan collectors were like, I know what that is. It's a Terra fan. <clears throat> That's the only way I was able to find it. And there's been other fans like that where I've been like, hey, I saw this as a kid. You know, I saw this fan here. What is this? And other people, you know. So there's definitely stuff I only know about because because of interactions with other collectors. Okay. Um, there's stuff that I might not have bought unless I knew other people wanted it. Either because I'm buying it to trade to them or to sell to them or to give to them. Or because it's for the museum, and I never really thought it was cool, but other people like it. We're having fun. So you like you know, and you understand what other people collect, and so you kind of play into that and yeah. help them collect. Yeah, absolutely. And again, before the museum, it was mostly like, hey, if I know somebody, I don't like, uh, I don't like Ferrari red Casablancas, but I know other collectors do. Well, I think you're wrong because I think they're super cool. Yes, I, I know. But <laughs> I, I, I was never a fan. I would have bought for myself. But I used to, you know, I used to be, I'd pick up stuff like that because I knew somebody else would want it. Sure. And we could trade it or whatever. Now I pick up stuff like that because if, if other people like it, then they might want to see it in the museum. Yeah. And then, of course, once there's one in the museum, then it's back to maybe somebody else will buy it or trade it or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, you definitely, you, it, 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 sometimes it changes what you like, too. Because if, like, there's a really crappy fan and you like it, but everybody else is like, hey, that's a really crappy fan, sometimes it changes your opinion, or sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it can really, like, reinforce your opinion. Like, well, you guys all hate it, but I think it's the best. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so one of the things I really appreciate about the fan groups on Facebook is that you know there's collectors from everywhere of all ages so i That's really true. i really appreciate seeing like the fan collectors from overseas yes um the ones that live in china or japan um it's really cool to see their perspectives but the fans that they see and then some of the yeah. yeah for sure and some of the collectors in china are giving us a perspective of the fan industry in china which i think is super cool That's i know there's true. some heated opinions one way or the other about some of the things that they're making yeah. but i think it's <laughs> right but i think it's really cool to see it i i absolutely agree with you i think you're right i think um we get some people that I don't know what their affiliation with fans is. I don't know if they work for a fan company or if they um, if they are just interested in fans or if they collect fans or if they work for a showroom or I don't know what their affiliation is. And it's hard to tell because they don't necessarily speak English as their first language. Right. <clears throat> and they'll post pictures of new fans from other countries. Yeah. And some people get angry because they're like, you're advertising. I'm like, how do you know they're advertising? Maybe they this is just something they like. Yeah. yeah, they might not work for that company. Maybe they're just showing you, hey, I like these fans. And I think, and like from my perspective anyway, I don't think there's anything wrong with advertising oh, on no. the group. I don't because, I, because, you know, if if fan companies want to engage directly with the fans, I think that's a really important dialogue to have. The fans of fans. The fans of fans, if yes. you will. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, that, yeah. that's why we have what we have with Fanimation, because Tom and Nathan and the other... You know Nathan, by the way? I know no. of him. I'm not familiar. He's uh, Tom's son. Okay. He's not as active on Facebook, but he's active on Facebook, and he... Um, he is the president of Fanimation. Tom, oh, okay. Tom is the founder and CEO, or f- founder and chairman, and Nathan is the president. Okay. Um, essentially, Tom turned over the day-to-day runnings of the company to him uh, some years ago, and Nathan was able to take Fanimation from a small boutique high-end company yeah. to like one of the biggest players. You know, a lot of that was was Nathan's doing. Um, <clears throat> not to take anything away from Tom, everything Tom has done, and to build the company. Uh, uh, is, is irreplaceable, but but then his son brought in a different perspective that helped grow the company further. Anyhow, so because they both engage directly with people who like fans, that's how we have a fan museum, and that's how we have group trips, and that's how you can talk to somebody that makes this fan and say, hey, I don't like this, and they'll tell you, well, here's why we made it that way. Yeah. We don't care that you don't like it, but we'll at least explain why. See, and I think that's super cool because, you know, other things that I collect, like I collect antique glassware, that's uh-huh. not possible, really, to talk to people who work in the industry because right. it's completely shifted. It's now very industrial. It's made by people in the steelworkers union. You know, it's all, it's all different than how it used to be there's not people designing it 
as it once was. And so there's right. not that dialogue with the collectors and the manufacturers like we have in the fan community. So I think it's super important that we maintain that. And yeah, I think not it's very, take it very rare that what we have. And I think part of that is 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 again, I get I, I can't give enough credit to, to Tom and to Nathan because I think it's unique the way that they specifically interact. There have been other fan companies that have interacted and engaged over the years, but never on that same level. Yeah. But also, I don't know, I don't think you were around. The original Ceiling Fan group, before it split off and there was a kids group and I was banned from the original group and everything that happened, um, there used to be a lot of manufacturers that would engage. Okay. Um, because I, I had connections at, at, at various different manufacturers, and I had brought them into the group, and so we would have people from Minka engaging. We would have people oh. from, from King of Fans, which is one of the companies that makes Hampton Bay engaging. We had okay. people from um, uh, Kishler engaging. Uh, we had people from, uh, when we still do, from Gulf Coast. We have Scotty, okay. Scott Bernard, who is a, 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 a fran- not a franchise owner. He's actually... He owns one. Of, I think he runs one of the corporate stores for them, and he engages quite a bit, which is great. Um, but we had we had probably at least a half dozen different fan companies that were engaging actively. And when I stopped uh, being a part of that group, a lot of them stopped engaging as well, um, just because they were kind of there through through me. Right. And have to be very careful sharing your trade secrets where other manufacturers in the same trade are there. Right. And so I was doing a lot of looking out for different companies to make sure that nothing got posted that was going to, like, you know, and so when that safety net was gone, a lot of that left. But we did have a time when there were a lot of different manufacturers engaging all at once. It wasn't just Fanimation. Um, but like you said, uh, some of these guys that post from overseas very well might be the manufacturers trying to engage. It's hard to say... Um, but if it is, I think that's great as well. Yeah. And I appreciate that they keep posting, even though some of the feedback that they get is not always... Uh, not always the most positive. Yeah. But it's, I think, I don't know, I just am impressed by everybody in the group and their passion for it. And I'm very impressed by all the things that you've done, both with the group, with people in the group, and to help maintain the fan museum. I think that's super impressive, all the things that you do and how passionate you are about it. And that, I think, really helps stoke the passion of others, which is very important. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, I'm glad to have you as a part of things, if for no other reason that we do not have nearly enough female representation. It's one of the things that has been talked about over the years is we're pretty well uncovering a lot of demographics. Sure. We have, uh, there's actually a higher percentage of gay people in among fan collectors than there is in the general population. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I guess I, and maybe that wasn't something you knew, but it's I know I didn't know that. Definitely true. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, we definitely have a higher percentage of those who are autistic. Yeah. Uh, and have other, uh, I don't know what the, what you call that, but other people with. I don't want to say they're the not. Starters. They're not neurotypical. Yes. There you go. Yes. Um, we have pretty much all of the major ethnicities covered. We have, yeah. you know, obviously plenty of white fan collectors, black, Hispanic, Asian, uh, Indian. You know, we have uh, pretty much all of the demographics covered, except women are very underrepresented. Yeah, I've only seen a few other female collectors in the group, um, which is it's disappointing for me. But I think it's just part of the hobby. I mean, maybe it's just that a lot of women don't have the passion for it, but I think that anything else, as the hobby grows, I think so too will yeah. the kind of people that are in it. I, I do wonder what that is about it that would be something that would appeal to straight men, gay men, but not women as much. I mean, for me, at least the kind of talk that I see in the group, I think a lot of the passion for fans focuses on the mechanical aspect of it, uh-huh. so people really like you know, this fan has this kind of motor, yeah. this fan has this kind of, you know, blade arms or whatever it may be. But I mean, we both but, know <clears throat> women that are very much into the technical aspects of things, too. That's true. And, you know. I guess I'm speaking, like, more from my perspective anyway, which is I yeah. like I like a lot of the cosmetic aspects of fans, which confuses some people because I'm like, this fan is green, and people are like, what are you talking about? This is a garbage it's fan. So pretty. Yeah, but I'm like, but it's pink. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was thinking, because I, I, I think... We, I, I mentioned Britt Slattery before, who married into fans, but yeah. has her own passion for them. <laughs> Which is awesome. Um, and then uh, there's a, a, a mother who's brought her three children to Fanimation on a couple of trips now, uh, uh, Ronnie, and initially she thought just one of the boys would be interested in fans. Uh, as it turned out, her young daughter has a interest in fans, and then Ronnie has also developed interest in fans. You've probably seen some of her posts yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah. And so... 
you know, those are the only, you know, active girls that I can think of in, in that particular community. Um, but uh, I am uh, hoping that more will come out of the woodwork, you know, and I think part of it is just also knowing that it's like if, if you're a girl and you see this and it's all guys talking you might it's think, not a female inclusive space you might think that right yeah or just like if you if, if you're if you, you know if you don't speak English and you see everybody that only speak English if if you're you know not white and everybody there is white you might yeah. not be as inclined to jump in and so which is why I think it's really important that like you're an active presence because other girls might see it and be like, hey, you know what, okay, there's girls here. This is not just a guy's club. And yeah, and I think, like for me, even if I don't know a lot about the subject at hand, you know, whether we're talking about the history of a fan or how it operates mechanically, if I have at least have something to contribute to the conversation, even if it's just, ooh, pretty, then somebody else can see it and say, okay, well, you know, there's at least one girl here, and so I can maybe be another girl. Not only that, but I think you, that you, that just your voice in saying that you like something is important too because there might be something that everybody else overlooked right and you're like but i like that yeah and then you know oh well at least one person like you know and then especially when you have people like there's, there might be a fan that i might have not thought to pick up whether it be for the museum or whatever but i'm like wait a second somebody said they liked it you know when you have the representatives there for the fan companies and they're they're you know floating trial balloons for stuff that they are doing yeah. and then you get feedback from you know i mean there's all different kinds of ways that even the smallest amount of input and just simply saying, I like this, here's why, yeah. is valuable. Um, so, uh, did you have any other questions? I think, you know, at the risk of making this video too long, I think that's it for now. Dan, thank you very much. I really well, have appreciated you. meeting you. It's been so, a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you for taking me to the restaurant with fans in it. And uh, we'll take an assi before we leave. I've got to finish my food, at least. And... Um, We'll post this in the ceiling fan group later so that everybody can see that uh, another fan meetup has happened. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I'll hand this back over to you. I will figure out how to turn it off. <laughs>